So let's kick off the first topic tonight, Deacon Matt. Don't take a vacation from your faith. What are we even talking about? Well, it's really interesting. So kind of backing up from the idea of the vacation, think about all the times in our lives when everything was pretty good, like pretty peaceful, we're pretty happy, we pretty much have what we want, we're pretty much where we want to be, you know, kind of the things that vacation is supposed to facilitate for us. But we also have other times outside of vacation when we might feel that way. And in those moments, we tend to, unfortunately, forget about God. It's not sometimes our instinct to thank God for those moments, to praise God for those moments, for where we are, who we're with. And if it's a vacation, that we're on vacation and have that time together and time to be away. So I think we have to fight. We have to be conscientious of that trend in us to, to forget about God during good times because we all remember God during bad times. Sometimes it's we call upon him and petition him for help. Sometimes it's we ask him, where are you? Because we don't understand what's going on, why bad things are happening to us. But in bad times, we tend to have God on our mind. So we're going to try to rewrite that script a little bit. And let's start with our summer vacation, um, where it's great to take a time away and enjoy. Maybe you're by yourself or where with your family, but just take time away, be somewhere different, doing something different, hopefully something you enjoy. But then bringing prayer into that, bringing scripture into that. There, you know, I think about myself on vacation. We just did a family vacation to Florida about four weeks ago. And one of the things that I found very helpful was just to pray with my wife every day. And one of the ways we did that was just got on the daily readings for mass that you can find anywhere, Google, Google but the USCCB, which is the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops website has a nice feature there that you can click on for the daily readings. Those daily readings really help ground you back in your faith back into worship of God, centering your day around God. And it's, we all know, especially if you've read the Bible more than once or paid attention at mass more than once, when those readings, because they are authored by God, you know, through a human writer, they speak to us. They speak right into our situations. They speak right into our vacation, right into the things that, and the people that we're enjoying. And all we need to do is remember to connect with that word and to do it prayerfully. There's that word again. <laughs> Which one? Prayer. Prayer. Yeah. Right. And, and 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 that is always going to be a constant theme, I think, on anything that we talk about. But I like the keeping it my you know in mind that we should approach this prayerfully, and and we can continue to develop our faith over the summer, and that's what's so important. But sometimes people need help. Mm -hmm. You know, they need they need resources, they need ideas, because it's so easy to sort of get busy or distracted with everything else that's going on in life. You know, something too, we talk a lot about liturgical seasons and in particular Advent and Lent as these two supercharged seasons because they seem to really, first of all, they're just rich in liturgical celebration and in readings, but these are also classic times to, to take stock of one's life, to reflect, to go deeper in one's relationship with God. But I would also add that vacation is similarly charged for you to have that time for reflection, because if you are, in fact, enjoying a little more peace, a little more relaxation, all that contributes to being a little more open to God and sort of looking for just sort of able to connect because things aren't so chaotic, which is what vacation is supposed to facilitate. Now, if you're with my family, it's always going to be chaotic on vacation. But even so, there are still these moments that you can get away and connect with God. Yeah, what I'm hearing you say is that this can be an opportunity for us. Oh, yeah. To really make, not maybe just hang on to our faith, but make advancements in our faith. You know, embracing the summer season the same way like you compared to our liturgical seasons, specifically Lent and Advent. But any of the seasons that provide us an opportunity to, to concentrate on a certain aspect of our faith, the summer can certainly be a concentrated effort to, to, to try to focus on our family faith. You know, and what can we do to not only grow as individuals, but to grow closer together as a family? Because I know as a parent, and I'm sure you do, that's our desire is that that we find ways that we can help our family grow together. There's nothing hurts us more than, you know, when our children or ourselves are bickering and not agreeing and, you know, letting the, the daily grind get to us. So I, I really love that idea of making summer well, an opportunity. Oh, absolutely. And think about like the psychological benefits 
as well as spiritual benefits to try to bring prayer into the family regimen on vacation. Maybe it's a prayer in the morning together, certainly prayers before meals or something like that. But it, it reorientates our mind back on God. And let's say your vacation's not going so well. Let's say the, the Verbo you booked is a total disaster or your rental car has a flat tire. What a great time to call upon God as a family, bring God into that situation. And yeah, you can complain together as a family, but you're doing it to God. And that even mm. complaining is a classic form of prayer we called lamentation. So I think it, it, there's practical psychological benefits to bringing prayer, the word of God, you know, uh, into your vacation time. Yeah. And this is perfect timing for me. You know, our family will be going on vacation in a couple of weeks. And hopefully this will be something to think about and consider and take action on for, you know, anyone viewing. And we tried to try to place this particular topic early enough in the summer that it would be helpful for folks. So if this is something that's coming to you as a new idea, let us know. Let us know what you're hearing that you may really be appreciating. Give us a thumbs up or, you know, a like, a love, whatever is on your platform. And let us know that this is speaking to you. If actually maybe I can, I'm just going to give us a thumbs up right here on YouTube as we speak. So I'm finding value in this. Hopefully you are too. If you're asking me, I am, but hopefully our viewers are too. I want to add one other thing, and I mentioned it just briefly earlier, that when you're on vacation, sometimes you're looking for, maybe you're not thinking about church, which hopefully you will be on this next vacation. But sometimes the obstacle is just like, I don't know where, the, you know, where's the Catholic church near me or what time are the masses. And so a good link to go to is masstimes.org which not only tells you the churches that are near you, but what time the masses are available. So it, it takes away that one obstacle, at least, to getting your family to church during vacation. Oh, I love that. And I was just thinking about that. So we dropped it in the chat box for you. You can check that out. Have you ever had a family member say, this is our vacation, which means we don't have to go to yeah. church, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had, I've had some clever theological folks in my family that <laughs> come up with all sorts of reasons. Like when you're traveling, don't you get some kind of dispensation? I'm like, oh, let's not go there. Yeah, let's yeah. not go there. Right, come on. I've got a friend from my parish who her family is exploring different churches over the summer. So I enjoy reading the report on the parish that they visited each Sunday. And they say, we went to this pair, you know, this church and here's what we discovered. And, and it's really an enriching sort of exploration that they're undergoing to, you know, uncover the unknown. You know, what can we find that's similar to what we're used to? What can we find that's different, you know, and, and where do we find the value in, in their way of life? you know, in, in the way that they sort of where they're located and how they conduct their mass, et cetera. Yeah, I love that. And that was our experience too. Like going to a different church when we were in Florida, it was like a, a, a little adventure. I mean, we're still talking about church, not like it's Disneyland or something, but the point is it's a different place. It's a different music perhaps, or where we went, it was much more kind of like a Gothic, more traditional style church in terms of architecture. They used incense. They had like 10,000 servers. I mean, that's an exaggeration. They had a lot of servers. All this kind of pomp and circumstance, which anyone can find fault with if people are looking to find fault. But for us, it was a change of pace. It was it en was engaging even for our twins who were three. Visually, audially, it was so different for them. And it was kind of cool, to be honest. Yeah, and, and imagine going to Mass where there are palm trees outside, right. you, you know, when you're not used to that, right? Or yeah. I remember taking as a youth minister, taking the kids on a ski trip and we went to mass, you know, and we're, we're, we're all trenching through the snow and it was so different for us. And, and it's just, it, I think it contributes to the experience. So anyway, thanks for sharing that link, masstimes.org. That's an opportunity for you to, to go and find a parish near you, wherever you happen to be.